Hello and welcome to another episode of the Denver Green Living Channel. And I'm so excited to have Ellen Dibble here today. And we're going to be talking all about the Metro Denver Green Homes Tour and getting a firsthand look at her house, which is one of the homes on the tour. I just want to tell you a little bit about Ellen before we, we dive in. So Ellen is on the committee, the Metro Denver Green Homes Tour Committee. She's the volunteer coordinator. And as I was recruiting some fellow EXP Realty realtors to volunteer, we got to talking and I heard that her home is one of the homes on the tour. So we thought this would be a good way to give you a peek at what you get to see when you buy a ticket and attend the tour. But we'll also be talking about the tour itself. Ellen also has a, a blog where she and her husband share their tips about how the journey that they've been on finding ways to improve the energy efficiency of their homes, including this home that we're going to get to peek at, which just got the platinum level with lead for homes. So thanks, Ellen, so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, Ellen, how about let's first talk about the Metro Denver Green Homes Tour, and then we'll dive into your home a little bit more. But how did you get going? So the tour is on October 1st. It's the first Saturday of the month every year. How did you get involved in participating with the Metro Denver Green Homes Tour? I was contacted by John Avenson. He's at avenson.net. He is an amazing energy efficiency expert who does a lot of outreach. And he happened across my blog and he contacted me because he was interested in someone nearby who is also working on a home to become more energy efficient. So he invited me to the 2017 tour where I we were partially finished with the house and they still put us on the tour and we worked with them after the tour. I continued to work with them to develop the tour the next year and learn the ropes, I guess you'd say. I still feel like I'm new because there are people that have been working on this for over 20 years, including John and Sheila Townsend, who is the other the director of the, the process that we go through to put on a home tour. Wow. So you got hooked, as you were saying, when we were getting ready to do the interview. So your home was part of one of the first or the tour in 2017. It's on the tour again in 2022. And so can you say more about the Metro Denver Green Homes Tour? Because I think it is, it's a crew that's running this tour, but it's also supported by some other local organizations. Yes, absolutely. So the tour is supported by New Energy Colorado, and that is where you can read about it at newenergycolorado.org's website. They also have a Metro Denver Green Homes Tour.org website that you can, if it's easier to remember, you can go there. You don't have to find the event. And the tour, a subset of that group is the Solar Citizens. And they are not maybe, they're just people who are mo interested in what's being done or what they could do to become more energy efficient. The New Energy Colorado is a more in-depth organization that has a number of lectures and webinars, and they, are, they have been around for a long time, since 96, promoting energy efficiency. Okay, great. So you did a great overview of that. As I was looking on the website, it looks like Lots of different sponsors hop in to help do this. NREL, the National Renewable Energy Lab, City of Golden, Colorado Renewable Energy Society, and lots of others. I know that last year I missed the tour, but Sheila sent me, Sheila Townsend, who you mentioned, sent me the guidebook, and it was really terrific to be able to see all the sponsors and all the houses there. So 
that's one of the things if you do take the tour you'll get the guidebook and you get to meet not only all the hosts and as many of the houses that you want to visit but you can also read about all these cool organizations that are out there both nonprofits builders all kinds of cool folks that are working on this stuff Yes, it turns out that our sponsors who are commercial tend to be the most knowledgeable and therefore the most supportive. So for instance, if you're getting your insulation blown in, you really want to get a quote from Best Way because they are very knowledgeable. Helio is doing work with whole house electrification. There's just the of course, NREL has always been a sponsor, and they are the National Renewable Energy Labs in Golden, and we partner with them for lecture sor sources for our lecture series, and some of the folks that work on the tour are actually employees there. So there's a close relationship there, too. And the tour is related to the national solar tour put on by the American Society for American Solar Energy Society. And they have been in existence for years and years, and they've been doing this tour for several years. In fact, I went on a tour when we lived in Arizona on, on the first Saturday of October in the national solar energy tour that happens all over the country. Right. I think that's a really... That's one of the things when I'm training people on how to start environmental initiatives is this idea about getting consistent with what you're doing on an annual basis. So this is a great example, but you know, first Saturday of October, no matter where you are, you're probably within range of a green homes tour. And I know that I went on one, gosh, maybe it's 10 years ago, but it's very memorable to be able to walk through the homes and talk to the people that either were the builders or the homeowners who did all these projects. So Sheila, let's talk a little bit about the tour itself. So when somebody is going to that website, they get their ticket for, I think it's $10 or you can make a donation for a higher amount, but You've got your ticket, and then what happens? Like how many tour, how many homes are on the tour? Where are they? Do you have to go to all homes? Like how do, what are the logistics of the tour itself? So the tour is only from nine to four. So you're going to have a, a you're going to have to choose, I think, which homes you're going to concentrate on, but they're all over from like Southern Lakewood all the way up to Superior. So we have two, for instance, in, in Golden and two in Lakewood, I think, and then two in Arvada. So we've got a good concentration nearby. And then we have one near Arvada. It's just over the line in Westminster. That's John's home that's on the tour this year. So there are a total of 12 places to visit some commercial development, mostly homeowners, some new homes and some renovated homes. So you have quite a, a variety. The book is an amazing, um, valuable resource. It will have a blurb about each house and an address. And then just before the tour, there's a map that will be available to the registrants. And the map will allow people to zero in on which homes they are choosing to visit. And then the book, the book is actually picked up at the American Mountaineering Center, either on Friday for a few hours, I don't remember the open hours, but a few hours on Friday. And that would be at the Net Zero Energy Store in Golden. And, and then Saturday morning, well, actually all Saturday, depending on how you can stop by and pick up your book, and then it will also have the map and you'll be able to go around and look at the homes. So a couple opportunities to, to get your book and a couple opportunities to see a map that would give you the addresses. I love this tour idea because I think there's, there's so many people that want to do something but they just have no idea where to start or they think you have to be an expert or you have to know people or, and this really overcomes a lot of those barriers. And with the 
new incentives that are coming with the Inflation Reduction Act, then there's a lot more money out there to help people renovating their homes to do this. And by the way, I do have another video on the Inflation Reduction Act, so you can watch that one there. And also Ellen Ed mentioned that companies like Helio can help you electrify. We have another video on electrification and heat pumps with Christine. So I'll leave the link to that as well. Once you start down this path, you might run into those obstacles of, ah, I don't know exactly who to talk to or who, you know, where to go. This home tour is a great resource and that guidebook in particular. So Ellen, in addition to the tour itself, there are some, there are some other events that are leading up to it, as well as the, like the, on the, let's talk about first on the day of, I think there's a, a couple other things happening with the EV something, and then also yes, the Let expo. me explain. The tour is from eight to four, and from five to seven, there's a gala featuring a beautiful duo, young couple who sing their names are Sarah and Aaron and they are going to play music for us during the event and then in the afternoon at the net energy zero energy store in golden there will be an EV show people will bring their Teslas and their Rivians and their Mustangs to the show and we'll show them off so you'll be able to see what Electric cars are available that people have purchased in the area. I think the least expensive one is a Leaf. And the most expensive one that everybody is waiting for is the Tesla or the Ford pickup truck. So those are two big ones on the horizon. The, the Grow Dome, which is in Golden and very close within walking distance of the American Mountaineering Center which is our center for the event. They will be demonstrating their grow domes, their greenhouse domes in the afternoon. And that's an exciting addition. And then there will be a tiny house in the parking lot of the American Mountaineering Center that's built by Azimuth Homes up in Greeley, I think. And so we'll be having tours of a tiny house that that people are very interested in tiny houses now. Yeah. I got to go to the Colorado Tiny House Festival, which was in June. And I'm not sure if it happens every year in June, but that's a thing to note if you're interested in tiny houses that you can go there too. But that's what's so great about this tour. So that you heard, just recapping what we've said already, that there's 12 homes on the tour across the Metro Denver area. Uh, but in addition, there's this EV roundup where you can see a bunch of different electric vehicles, talk to the owners. You can see this grow dome, the tiny house, as well as the expo reception in the evenings. And in addition, there are also three different speakers uh, events coming up that are leading up to it. So there's, and all this information is on the Metro Denver Green Homes Tour dot org website. And so Ellen, before we dive in, and I didn't mention before, so Ellen's company where her blog that her and her husband is Twin Springs Research Institute, and that email or that website address, which I'll put in the notes, is blog.twinsprings.com. So if you want to see the different things that they've been doing, like the last one, one of the ones I see on here is the Colorado average home gas use versus hours. So you want to see what all they've been doing, how a couple of people made this renovation themselves to get to lead platinum, then you can go to blog.twinsprings.com. So Ellen, is there anything else that we should mention before we go into the tour, before we start talking about your home? You mentioned people not knowing where to start. And we always tell people to start with a home audit, an energy home audit, and those are approved by Excel and you get a rebate when you get one through Excel. So you apply through Excel, you choose a vendor through Excel, and you get somebody out to, to tell you the most important things for you to do to your house to become more energy efficient. They typically are insulate and seal it up. That's what mine was. 
And then it said, you need new windows. And it, it said that my air changes per minute were very high. And so I needed to seal up and do as much as I could to lower that number so that we could seal it tight and ventilate. Yeah, and we're gonna be talking about that. And I do have another video about the Excel Energy Audit and I agree 100%. I've had a couple people that I've mentioned that and they've called Excel and within 10 days, their audit is done. Someone has come out and so it's it doesn't have to be a long drawn out process. And with the audit, they're going to tell you what rebates you qualify for. And starting in 2023, those rebates are going to be even higher. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. Although I do think that some of the folks that are doing the things in the Metro Denver Green Homes Tour are pushing it to that next level. And that's why it's so great to, to know these other of these other builders, contractors, and homeowners who are fi figuring all this stuff out as we go. One question I had for you, Ellen, before we talk about, or as I guess, let's go ahead and start talking about the home renovation. So give us a little bit of background of how did you come into this project of doing this yourself? You mentioned some of your background was homesteading and do more rural and, and now I don't remember where your home is located. Are you, is it Arvada? We're in Arvada, Colorado. Arvada, okay. And the reason we're in Arvada, Colorado is that when we retired, we had two gorgeous grandchildren who lived in Arvada, Colorado. And we wanted to just move closer because we enjoyed them so much. So we, I started looking for a home. Dave was not yet retired. But I was retired and I said, I'm going to look around. So when I started looking around, I looked up in the mountains. I looked in the neighborhood where my daughter lived. And for some reason, oh, and I looked at homes that were being sold by banks because that was an era and we bought it at the end of 2011. That was an era where there were still homes that were being sold by banks. When I saw this one, I knew. I knew right away this is the one because it's earth burned. It's a solar built, passive solar built home. However, when we negotiated with the bank, we had a home inspection and we found that the slab was severely cracked, severely <laughs> heaved. Yeah. So do you think we gave up on it? No, I guess not. we just told the bank that if they gave us a reduction based on our estimate, our least expensive estimate to replace the floor, that they, that we would still purchase it. And so I have to say that we were very fortunate that we were willing to do the work because we love the place and it had good bones, as they say. Right, exactly. And you had also been, so before you started on this project, you had been doing homesteading. So could you say a little bit about that of some of, because I think you learned a lot, you had a lot of skills going into this, although not in maybe the suburban kind of realm. Yes, yes. We took it all on ourselves and we found a little farm in Indiana when we were very young. We were having our first child and we bought 27 acres. And then the neighbors said, we're leaving our house burned down. We have a trailer now. We would like to buy the other 13 acres. And we said, yes, we'll buy it. So we just bought it right from them. And we began to build first a tiny house, believe it or not. Back then there was a book called Handmade Houses and it was about folks who had gone off the grid and had built houses that were very small and heated with wood. And so that was our first building project. And it was about 400 square feet and we lived there for five years. And by the time we were done, we had two children and we were sleeping in the loft and heating with a wood cook stove, the old fashioned kind where you could cook on it. And then we had started a larger house, which was post and beam and well insulated. And the 
first floor was all six inch walls, all the things you would expect from that era, passive solar, lots of south facing windows. And we built it ourselves. We built the whole thing, except for we had help with the concrete floor. And we had help with, we had added onto it twice because our family grew and we, we had help with the last addition, but the rest of it we did. In fact, my daughter can't believe that we did this once she had a family, but we put the kids to bed and we'd go to work on the house and work until like midnight. And then we That's get up amazing. the day. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing oh my gosh but we loved it yeah yeah that's really cool I had some very minor experiences similar where we we had one house and then we bought the and we renovated it and then we bought the house next door and did it again and it was funny because our kids would remark to other parents oh I like this tile that you chose for the bathroom they're like <laughs> Thank you. And they'd be having these <laughs> discussions that not all the other kids would know. So I'm sure that your kids learned a ton. And yeah, that's... they're pretty handy, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine. I don't think that's as common as it once was to have all those, those skills with your hands with building. All right. So now let's go ahead and we're going to go into, we're going to share some videos of all the different kind of key parts of the home. But before we go into that, would you like to give a little bit of a an overview of what we're going to be seeing? I took a little walk around my house. I started in the front, which is a yard that is unusual because it's in the front of the house instead of the back. And then I did some work looking at the airlock entry, looked at the, the what I would what I called the heart of the home, which was a utility room and all the pieces there. The, we have a wood burning boiler, which is pretty unusual. And mm -hmm. it feeds warm water to the gas boiler. The gas boiler is also the water heater, an instant water heater. So I talk about that. I talk about the appliances, the Energy Star appliances and some of the things that I bought secondhand that I particularly like. And then we have a bathroom in the back that I talk about the ventilation fan. And then we go outside and look at the Tesla solar roof and some of the water collection that we do. And a little far look at the two little greenhouses and uh, the rear of the house has some Urbanite walls, which is used concrete, which guess where we got the concrete <laughs> out of that slab of this house. Oh my gosh. We... <laughs> wow, cool. And then I go into the garage and point out the two Tesla power walls. Cool. Okay, this is great. And so now those people that are listening, you can see all these things that she just said, like, wait, we're using concrete and what like secondhand things did you use and all the, the solar and all these different parts and pieces that, that make this into an unusual home, but not it's doable. It's all this stuff is really doable. We can do now. it. And, yeah. And so that's, that's what we're working on with eXp Realty. We started this climate action network and we're, we're finding partners that will come in with renovation loans and for a seller or sorry, for a buyer, but even for a seller that has a home that wants to upgrade it before they sell it. There's another service that we found that's one of our partners. There's like green utility options when you get hooked up. So that's what we're trying to do is be like the source of the source so that you don't have to figure all these things out. And then when you're buying or selling, investing in a home, you're not just thinking the number of bedrooms and bathrooms, but ooh, I wonder if we could make this a net zero energy home. I wonder if we could get a lead platinum home like Ellen did. And just showing you, this is very doable. And, and Ellen, did you already talk in one of the videos about what lead platinum is or should we cover? No, that I did here? not. And I do yeah. think we could at least mention it. Yeah, uh, definitely. It is a leadership and environmental education and design. So L E D and it's part of the green building network, U S G B C, which is the United States green building council. 
and they have a website, usgbc.org. And the, you can find out what it takes for a lot of different kinds of buildings to, to create a more sustainable future and a more sustainable building. So about 40% of the energy that we use goes to buildings. And the reduction there that is possible is impactful. So we, I learned about this organization and I stuck with it. There's also the Passive House Movement, which is also very interesting. And you can learn more about that from John Avenson who went with that route. But I uh, picked up LEAD and I took a few courses from them on green rating and what, how you were able to gain points for your evaluation to finally get LEED certification. So LEED certification is actually mentioned in the, the real estate listing service. It will say at the bottom if the house is LEED certified. I don't think it's used a lot in residential architecture. We're hoping that it will be used more. But just like they introduced the walking score, there's going to be, I think, an energy score for homes that would increase their value to those folks who are looking for lower utility bills. Because of course my utility bills are not non-existent because I'm hooked up to utilities, but very low. So I think my last bill was $20 for mostly for gas. And how large, I meant to ask you earlier, how lar large is your house? Our house is moderate size. It has three bedrooms and three bathrooms, a family room, a kitchen, living room, dining, kitchen, living, dining, all in one flow. And it's 2,213 square feet. So $20 or so a month to condition a 2,200 square foot home. And this, I'm so excited about what you're doing because I worked on the Colorado Home Energy Rating System in 1988. And the reason I know that is because I remember bringing my little daughter to meetings and she's now 33 years old. Or I don't, I'm not sure which. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. That's right. So anyhow, it is very exciting. I'm not sure if I did the math there, but I remember bringing that little one to meetings and working on the Colorado Home Energy Rating System that the Illinois one, the Fort Collins. And I've been really surprised doing real estate, how little attention goes to energy bills. And so this is just a note for you as buyers to be asking, what are the energy costs and see if you can get that information and then getting an energy audit in addition to home inspection and looking at getting a renovation loan. That's, those are a few things that you can think about to get your home upgraded because maybe you don't want to stay up after you put the babies to bed <laughs> and renovate your home every <laughs> night. Not everybody could do that. <laughs> yeah. We were, we had stars in our eyes, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the last question before we turn over the videos, what are these little sparkling white things that we see? Let's see if I can turn this around and have you see my husband see that Clarespy window up there yeah my husband got into he used to do stained glass but he got into this hobby of making twinklers and it was really to catch the eye of our baby our youngest grandson but I love them so they sparkle when the sun is shining and send their sparkles because they all over the room so when we had a baby, the baby would be follow the light and be very impressed. But I, we have them hanging up there to catch the light. And it's like crystals hanging in the. Yeah, it's okay. actually little pieces of mirror. Oh, uh, and he, he makes on his 3D printer. He makes frames to glue the mirror into of different shapes. Gotcha. There's. Anyway, I love, that's I love that. Of, I'm like the baby or a cat or something, just mesmerized. Yeah, if, if you had a cat, <laughs> they would be running exactly. after them. All right. Okay. So next, we're going to phase into watching some of these videos that Ellen made, showing us her, around the house. But remember to get your tickets for the Metro Denver Green Homes Tour. It's MetroDenverGreenHomesTour.org. 
the main events are all on October 1st. There are some other speaker series leading up to it still in September. And if you're not in the Metro Denver area, then check with your local Solar Energy Society. Just check on Eventbrite, look around and see if you can find a homes tour on October 1st. So the first Saturday of the month, any year that, that you're listening to this. I right. want to say that the American Solar Energy Society has a web page that lists all the ones that are registered. Oh, cool. Right there. Yeah. Awesome. So that's a great way to find all those. All right. Okay. So thanks, Ellen. And stay tuned, everybody, as we head in to this next part of our session. We'll start here in our outside patio. It's actually our backyard in front, in our front yard. And we have a nice pergola that was original over the top of the shaded area and a couple of big trees that we're trying to save from the emerald ash borer. We're looking at the solar scoop of, in the front of the house and the trombi wall. The wall is so hot now that we glazed it that I've hung a couple of things in front of it to take away some of the heat. And I will be looking at solar shutters later this year. Here's a display of our platinum certificate. It is what we earned by creating a net zero home, insulated, sealed, and implementing all the lead sustainability features that we could into this house, which will earn us enough points for the very highest level of lead certification. Very proud of that. Here's our airlock entry. You can see that we have a door entering the from the outside. We use this for our front door. And the windows are all pin windows, the windows and doors. That's a very famous insulated window that's made right here in Colorado. It's the best window in the country, the best, the most efficient window that's made in the United States. And they were able to put these windows in several large installations, including the Empire State Building. The Trombi wall is glazed with regular sliding glass door replacement glass single pane because we cut them in half because double pane was too heavy and this piece is was an unusual shape so it's a double walled greenhouse plastic that we used for the unusual shape there's an overhang that is giving us some shade in the front but when the sun is getting lower in the fall it's not wide enough it's two feet wide and it should be probably be four feet wide so again we had to put some blockage up to take care of some of that heat and I have some old blinds on part of it at the end there and when I get some solar shutter shutters they'll be automated and they'll be exactly fit to the windows and to the panels instead of a glass or plastic insert we used a almost exact fitting solar panel. That's a used solar panel, so it was only $20. And it will hopefully power a little fountain in front of the house there in the future. We'd like to have a little water feature. And this is the inside door. This is the door that goes out to the airlock entry and also to the garage. And it has a... Um, weather stripping around it and the garage door has weather stripping and there's also a fire alarm carbon monoxide detector in that room so that we can keep any garage fumes from entering the home we have some sconce lights that were part of the a purchase that i made of stained glass sconce lights because and i have them all over the house and i just really like those they came from a spa and some sliding doors, the doors that people were liking for a while because they were rustic and we have these doors and a couple of places in the house. They're um, 
They are also made from the doors that I bought used that are pure uh, solid pine. And the iron rack systems are purchased from Amazon. They are easy to obtain. We have nest thermostats throughout the house. One thermostat that is an Ecobee because we needed a one that had a remote at the time. The nest did not have remotes, so we could run it in both back be bedrooms, which are both on the same zone. The track lighting was also used, and I like the way it really illuminates the room. Lots of light goes into this room from the track lighting. The ceilings are in this area are all painted white and they do not have texture so that they can be reflecting light from outside. And this is another used find that I rewired for the chandelier over the table. And we have one in the kitchen that I also found and had to put the corrugated pans on it in order to make shades because I had the frame, but not the shades on the lights. So I couldn't find the right glass. I used corrugated pans. So we had a little inventiveness there. The pillar was covered with the same stone as the fireplace. It will reflect a little bit of heat in the middle of the winter when the sun shines that far in. And I like the stone look with the fireplace matching. So the rustic look is again featured in the house. This is the energy recovery ventilator attic. It's just above the guest bathroom and it's the only place you can actually hear the mechanism of the ERV running. In this room, you'll see that there's an air delivery round vent and a air uptake square vent. So this bathroom is actually showing you the use of the used real wood door and some real wood accents, some recycled granite and granite sink, an old cabinet that was made by some friends. And here we have our toilet that is a Niagara stealth toilet and that means that it only has a half gallon short flush and a eighth eight tenths of a gallon long flush and so together it's quite a low flush ratio and then another feature of our bathrooms is that our showers are roll-in showers so they have this one has an extra spray for if you have to sit on the bench if you're disabled and you can roll a a wheelchair or shower chair right into the bathroom and the ladder that i have in here is basically because i'm still working up in the attic occasionally enough that it makes sense for me not to have to move this tall ladder every time Above our refrigerator, which is Energy Star, we have one mini split unit that we use for air conditioning. Once we glazed that trombi wall, it was almost impossible to get this room cool unless we used outside air at night. So we have some of the ERV vents are up there. The square one is the intake vent and the round one sends out fresh air. We have a lot of nice copper pots. So I'm always a little sad about needing a induction range because these copper pots will not work on an induction range. We do have some that would work. And we have Energy Star refrigerator and part of our stove has been replaced with a induction Hot, hot plate on the stove that will allow us to cook with those pans that are magnetic. What's unusual about our fireplace is that it is a wood burning boiler. The black window that is in there, the seal window that seals the fire, 
is part of the front of the boiler and the boiler is actually inside the cabinet with of course it has heat reduction dry board that's insulated from the wood but the actual stove does not get very hot because the water circulates around the boiler and it can go over to the boiler in the utility room and heat the house when we have a fire. Generally, I heat the back of the house because the back of the house is the least hot because it has the least insulation and it also does not have the radiant pipes in the floor. If you look at the piping behind the stove here, and I do have a door that I was going to install here, but so we have the power box and this stainless steel kettle actually takes the excess water if it boils off and stores it so that we don't have a problem. Inside there's a pressure tank, a large pressure tank because this is a larger stove and there are a couple of pumps. One pump runs the primary loop like in the regular boiler and when that temperature, when that water that's going through the stove reaches 90 degrees, which is the least amount of temperature, about the least amount of temperature that we can use to heat, the second pump comes on because there's a temperature sensor here that turns on the second pump and that will deliver the water to the boiler. Now, because the boiler is getting warm water, it is not going to fire with gas. It is just going to circulate that water. And as long as we have a call for heat, which we have to make sure there's a call for heat in the back of the house, we can get heat from this stove. I must say that we use heat so seldom that mostly fires are restricted to holidays and very cold weather. You'll notice that I have some wood furniture. This furniture is made in Indiana, which is where I'm from. And it is a famous type of furniture called Old Hoosier Furniture. And I really love this. It's in many of the state parks. And I was able to find some used furniture in this style. So I was able to add this furniture to my home. This is the door to the utility room. We had this nice little shelf installed over the top of the door. It's a sliding door. And this is where it all happens. We have a lot of equipment in here. The electrical input for the well has a meter on it to tell us how much we're using the electricity when we when the well runs there is a power to the pump when we turn that on and some instructions about how to run the hot water fireplace boiler this is how we store our cleaning supplies some of our cleaning supplies and this blue bot is a water meter which will report to us how much water we use on a daily basis behind there you can see the blue tank, which is the pressure tank that delivers pressure to the home. The water pressure has to be made artificially because the well can't deliver the water directly to the directly to the pipes because it wouldn't be moderated. We have a large water treatment system. The, this tank is for manganese and iron. It will back flush every week. And we also have some carbon filters. The silver vent goes to the boiler and it actually uh, brings in fresh air directly to the fire so that no fresh air is drawn from the room. These are the valves for the 
radiant heating system, we have six zones. And above here is the zone controller. Here's a dirt drop. It, it takes dirt out of the lines and you can empty that from the bottom. We have, this is the secondary pump. This pump is a very low electrical use, gut grunt flows. And it actually will display how many watts it's using during its operation. And we can change the pressure with that tank. This is a air release on the water system, on the boiler system. And down here we have a pump that runs our hot water circulation. The hot water pipes are insulated to R7. They are in a loop throughout the house and they return. Original house had a copper return under the slab and through the wall that goes to the crawl space. So we use that same copper return to hook up this pump and this pump is operated by a remote and the remote actually is turned on when a few minutes before we want hot water. The hot water circulates throughout the system so that when we actually turn on the hot water pipe, we have a very short run between the main loop and the, and the faucet so that the water is almost instantly hot, which is a very recommended way to, to work with your hot water. We have this overflow tank for the boiler system and behind here is a the green flashing light is a an electronic water softener. It actually puts turbulence in the water so that the minerals are mixed into the water and are not as likely to settle out in your appliances. We have lots of on-off valves so that we can change pumps or whatever if we need to. And our boiler is a triangle tube challenger. We got this in 2012 and installed it. And it is 90% efficient and 85% efficient as a hot water heater. Those are pretty good figures. The 90% is a little bit in question. It was sold as 98% eff effective. When we got it, it said 90, and then later they changed it to 95. So I'm really not sure how effective this is, but it has an, a power fan that exhausts and a fresh air intake. And it is also our hot water heater. So it's an instant hot water heater. And the hot water is filtered with a calcium filter so that the pipes aren't clogged with minerals. Our appliances are all Energy Star. This is the chest freezer because we like to preserve some food. This is the washing machine and dryer, 2009 Energy Star. The uh, gas dryer is really not recommended these days because we're trying to get rid of gas. Our boiler is also gas but they are both very efficient users of gas. So we feel that as long as the electricity, the electrical companies are burning coal and gas, we can hold off on complete electrification. So that is a, an overview of our utility room, which is really the heart of the, the home. One system I didn't mention is a heat exchanger. So this heat exchanger, the water that goes into the heat exchanger is from the wood boiler and then on one side, and it also goes out back to the wood boiler to get hot again. The water that is in the heat exchanger is paralleled with pipes from the boiler so that the water is gonna go into the boiler and then it comes back out to the heating system. So it's gonna be delivered here through the heating system. Mostly we will have just one valve open for this. It will be the back of the house. As I mentioned before, the back of the house is the coolest part of our house. It does not have radiant heat in the floor. It has old fashioned radiators.
above us in the main great room, living room, we have our clerestory windows and a light shelf so that the light bounces off that shelf and illuminates the whole room instead of with direct light. The ERV uh, vent is in this chase and it gets distributed in the room here on the other side of the room and also in the bedroom. And we have some lights here. Some of them come on at night automatically so that we can have a little night light in this room. The shades that are on the front windows were of course recycled from another home and they cover the windows when the sun is shining in and when it's too hot outside. These are the signs that I have made already for the Metro Denver Green Homes Tour. They tell information about the various installations in the house and how they were created and what they help how they help the energy efficiency of our home and we do have a coffee station with a little wet bar and the kitchen is also old hickory furniture which we really like this bathroom unlike our others, was not renovated by us. We had a team of expert carpenters come in and take care of this bathroom. We had to change the drywall to paperless drywall for lead. They do not allow paper drywall around the shower or tub, and that's to keep it from disintegrating over time. So we, again, use the same tile that we have used elsewhere in the bathrooms. We got that tile very inexpensively as seconds. And up in the ceiling is a Panasonic Whisper Quiet green exhaust fan. And that fan is so quiet, you can barely hear it. It actually comes on if there's a certain amount of humidity in the room and it will go off by itself. Our trim is a pebble tile, which we bought to match the pebble tile that was on the reused vanity, which is an old Singer sewing machine. So I'm very fond of older furniture, and this particular piece was quite reasonable. The faucet is a kitchen faucet, so it does have a spray that we could use for a bidet. We don't typically use it that way, but it would be possible. And again, the toilet is the Niagara Stealth that has a very low flush ratio, more so than most any toilet on the market. And I bought those online. They were used to me by the Fort Collins Sustainability Fair, and they were buying them in Fort Collins, and I was impressed. So the cabinet is an old cabinet, an antique that my sister gave me. And the mirror is copper frame that was also secondhand. So the copper sink and the copper frame are the accents in this room. It's a very rustic design, which is, of course, what I prefer. We like to think of this room as a lodge, this house as a mountain lodge, which has that theme throughout. This is Dave's workstation. He has a 3D printer, and he's quite good at making a variety of things that we can use in the house. He has a lot of supplies for this unit and this cabinet here. And they are quite uh, popular with grandkids to make whistles and things like that. Here is the equipment wall behind the garage for our Tesla solar roof. The Tesla solar roof is currently 
soaking up the sun and making electricity for us. And the entire north side of the house is covered with the Tesla solar roofing shingles that are installed on the roof. There are a few that are not solar, but most of them are. And that's a 16 kilowatt system, which is good for us because with right now we're making extra electricity. In the winter, we'll be using that electricity. We have a couple of small greenhouses back here. They were kind of experiments in design and they're not planted right now, but we can get some winter planting from those. The back of our house is has a, a big berm, which on the other side of that is a farmer's canal. And so the farmer canal delivers water away from Clear Creek. And at the bottom of that, you can see that you're gonna have a hillside and some water is gonna flow down that hill. And also some water may come through that dam, soak through that dam. And so we have a couple of fruit trees that have actually survived. Several of our fruit trees have not survived, so we're very glad to see these two peach trees. And this year, because of the late frost, we got two peaches. So we're very hopeful that in some years we get more than that. This is the outside mini split unit. It is a heat pump unit, and that means that it takes the heat from the air to cool the house because what it does is it cools the heat and then it is able to extract cooling from that air. The chimney, the plastic chimney here, the PVC chimney is from the boiler and that's a dual chimney. So it handles both the intake and the exit. And we have our dryer vent and up higher are the e, is the ERV vent that releases the air from the home after it has been scrubbed by the filters in the ERV. Have a nice gleam of solar coming off of our roof. This pipe, this PVC pipe is the intake for the for the stove, the boiler fireplace. It intakes fresh air as I mentioned before. And then we have one of our radon fans that is clearing radon from under the slab. On the other side here we have, not only do we have the exhaust from the ERV, but we also have a radon exhaust operating up there. And then we have a weather station that is a AccuRite weather station. It's Wi-Fi and so we can get that information both on an inside panel and to our phones to hear what's, what the temperature is, what the rainfall is humidity, etc. This vent is just an attic vent because this is one of the few places that we have an attic. It covers, it covers the back bedrooms only and it has been piled with all the excess fiber clasp pads that we removed from the home when we were, when we were tearing the house apart, we kept all the best fiberglass bats and we have about four layers of fiberglass in this attic. And then you can see the window there on the roof. That is a sun tunnel. So I didn't mention that in the bathroom, but the bathroom was all illuminated with daylight. And that is so bright, you think the lights are on, but they're not. They're just, it's just sun coming through that sun. This is our outside. It has the freeze-proof pump on the top so that our spigot on the top so that we can get water from back here that it's not does not go through the system that is purifying it the wall here is made with the concrete that and tile that were torn out of the house the this is the window that allows us to escape if there's a problem in this bedroom and the the wall was composed of used concrete which means that it is called urbanite it's like a stone using a stone and we have a little Japanese garden back here outside the window. The, the urbanite also, urbanite was used to build this garden wall and the garden wall is hopefully going to be extended at some point 
we haven't actually been using the garden wall lately because we've been building out in the front of the the front of the house we've been using some dirt out there that we've trucked in and this is a dual watering system to put water into the garden back here this is the rainwater system from the roof the gutters will collect the water and send it to these two barrels we're allowed to have two barrels now because of the change in the law in Colorado that allows you to keep some water on hand from the rain and so we capture this water and can pump it back to the greenhouses where we can use some water or to the garden but mostly we use it in the back in the greenhouse in the garage we have two tesla power walls they are about 12 kilowatt each and we can use about 10 from each so it's about 20 kilowatts of backup power we not only use this for backup but we use it to fill in for our solar when the sun is down so it will feed into these first, the solar will feed into these first, and then it feeds back to the grid. Our electrical box has the cover off. We have a meter on that to tell us how much the, this part of the so this electrical system is using, how much power it's using. And we have the wiring that goes through the wall to the back. This paint is actually most re recycled paint or it is paint that we got used and we did use all low voc paints and caulks in the house when we were finishing the house inside well thank you so much to ellen dibble for giving us that tour of her home in arvada one of the homes that's going to be on the metro denver green homes tour for 2022 Definitely check it out, metrodenvergreenhomestour.org. My name is Joan Gregerson. I'm a realtor here in Denver, Colorado. I'm on a mission to help people make a positive environmental impact when you're buying, selling, investing, or just living in your home. So if there's anything I can do to help, then please reach out. I think that all of us can be part of the solution and make our kids and grandkids proud of us everywhere in the world that we are taking this seriously and doing everything that we can to create a livable future for them for generations to come. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Love to hear your comments, your suggestions for other topics and leave a comment there. Give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more and I hope to see you soon in the Mile High City.